Hello, everyone, and welcome to Heads Up, the weekly webcast and podcast of the National Headache Foundation. I'm Dr. Lindsay Weitzel, migraine strategist, chronic daily migraine survivor, and founder of the Facebook group Migraine Nation. I am here today with Dr. Tim Smith. Dr. Smith is the CEO of Study Metrics Research and has conducted numerous clinical trials on migraine medications. He is also the Vice President of the National Headache Foundation. Hi, Dr. Smith. How are you today? Well, Dr. Watson, thanks for having me back on. Thank you for being here again. Uh, we are all very familiar with Dr. Smith. Uh, he is here whenever we talk about an important new or emerging drug or device therapy, since he does so many clinical trials in the area of migraine and headache research. And today we have some exciting news that I'm really excited to talk about. There are so few migraine treatments and chronic headache treatments that are approved by the FDA for use in people under the age of 18. So whenever something becomes available for this population, we really like to do an episode on it. And just recently, the device Nerivio has been approved for people over the age of 12. And this is very exciting to me because I was one of those people in that age group who really back then had almost nothing available to me to use. So I know how important this can be uh, when you're a young person with migraine. So um, Dr. Smith is going to answer our questions about this. And if you have questions we didn't answer and you are uh, on social media or you're seeing this, go ahead and put your questions in the comments. So Dr. Smith, can you begin by reminding us what Nerivio is? Sure. So uh, Nerivio is a, a transcutaneous electronic stimulator, and it's what they call a, a remote electric stimulator. And um, this is done, uh, everyone, many people are familiar with uh, the cephaly device and the others that might stimulate, uh, you know, the trigeminal nerve fibers or the gamma core that stimulates the uh, vagus nerve fibers and and those uh, sorts of things. Uh, the Nerivio device is, is interesting because it we do this remotely. It's not directly stimulating a cranial nerve. Uh -huh. And it's when we say remotely, we don't mean in another county. We mean <laughs> it's uh, basically it's a stimulator that's applied to the arm, to the upper right. arm. And it kind of looks like a blood pressure cuff and uh, the patients can slip it on. And uh, it has the little electrode that that goes in the middle and peel the backing off and it's held in place by the little blood pressure cuff device. And then it's, uh, the patient uh, controls it remotely. That's the other remote piece is uh, they can control it remotely with their phone. So they right. download an app and then they can turn it on. And uh, the phone also tracks a lot of metrics uh, on the platform as to their headache frequency. And there's an opportunity for them to give feedback on how severe their pain is and how quickly it goes away and that sort of thing. And that's outside of a clinical trial. We talked about some of that uh, large database reporting that's been going out. So, so that's what's, uh, what's behind Nerivi, uh, the Nerivio, de Nerivio device. And, um, and uh, it's been approved both for episodic uh, migraine and recently got approval for chronic migraine in adults. Mm -hmm. And now we have this adolescent indication, which is, uh, is to your uh, previous comments, is really important. Right. So can you just give us a couple statements on, because this might seem strange to people, that it's, it fixes your migraine, hopefully, uh, but it's on your arm. How does that even work? Yeah, so, well, I guess the best, uh, simplest way is to just say everything's connected, right? Mm -hmm. Nothing exists in a vacuum. And uh, what we find is it, it sort of made sense to us before when we were studying, you know, the cranial nerves and their direct input into the brainstem. Well, as it turns out, these other spinal nerve uh, uh, tracks uh, connect indirectly through the brain, brainstem and they uh, uh, connect through the spinal cord. And then uh, uh, there's this whole descending pain inhibiting pathway that everyone has in their, in the basic areas of their brain and spinal cord. And uh, what turns out is when you send this other signal across uh, into the spinal cord, into the brain, brain stem, and then to the ascending centers, it uh, switches on the descending uh, suppression pathways. So you can actually help turn off our uh, uh, migraine attacks 
uh, by applying the stimulation uh, in this uh, more remote area. Uh, but it works very, you know, very well in the clinical trials, and the FDA has cleared it, uh, obviously, and it's been on the market for, for a little while, a year or, or maybe a little more. I can't remember when it actually first came on, but uh, we've had it for a little while, and people are starting to uh, use it and, and get used to it a little as being a, a bona fide therapy that's out there and available for us. Okay. Can you tell us uh, what, what is the data showing us for how effective Norivio is in people under the age of 18? Well, uh, basically, stated plainly, it, it tracks about the same as what we see with adults. Okay. Uh, specifically, in the clinical trials that uh, got uh, the FDA clearance uh, for it in, in uh, teenagers, uh, showed there was 70% uh, of those using it uh, for migraine attacks. Uh, for each attack, there's a 70% uh, pain relief uh, um, success rate. And that's where you go from a moderate to severe migraine to a mild or no uh, migraine status. So that's 70%. Uh, and then uh, the pain freedom one, the other one that we look at very frequently, right. uh, the two hours of pain free was at 35%. So about half. And that's kind of what you would expect from, uh, uh, from most treatments, maybe a little, a little better from, than what we see in some, uh, some of the pharma treatments, uh, depending on which studies we're looking at. Okay. Um, and how long does it usually take to work? And also, do, do people need to catch the migraine really early on, or can you start using it once the migraine's in full effect? Uh, well, as is the case with all treatments, and it is true for the, the uh, Nerevio device, the, the earlier the better. Uh, and uh, it's a 45-minute treatment. In the clinical trials, uh, if patients discontinued it prior to a half an hour, we didn't consider that a full treatment mm -hmm. dose. Uh, but 45, it, it times itself out after 45 minutes and you're done. Uh, many people start to feel better uh, while it's still operating. Uh, mm -hmm. And then the two hour rates that I gave you uh, earlier uh, indicate that most people are getting uh, substantial uh, relief within two hours. Uh, which is the metric that the FDA always looks at. Interestingly, uh, for the people who get relief and who uh, um, get pain freedom, for example, about 90% of them uh, still have that relief or freedom sustained for 24 hours. So it's, wow. it, uh, that's a good metric to know mm -hmm. that if, if it does work, it's likely to give you a, a protective um, you know, effect that lasts even beyond that right. uh, once you turn it off and, and put it away, it still may be uh, helping your system stay pain-free for the rest of the day. Right. Um, does it have any side effects that have been reported, especially in this under 18 group that we're speaking about today? Really, the only significant side effects are local ones, just the, the sensation uh, at the site of application. It can cause uh, some tingling and and anybody who's used any kind of uh, transcutaneous electrical stimulation knows whether it's one of the other cranial nerve stimulators or a ten TENS unit or, or those kinds of things, uh, you can feel, uh, feel it operating, but you don't uh, have, if you're, if you're using it in a, in a, uh, a dose or, or uh, the amplitude that's uh, becoming uncomfortable, you're using too much. Right. So, you know, and you have the, uh, the ability is to, turn it to the degree that you can feel it, but not so much that it hurts or it bothers you. Mm -hmm. And so if you do that, then most patients do just fine. Sometimes when you take off the cup, there's a little red spot or something that fades in less than an hour, but that's the main thing that we see. Certainly fewer side effects than we're usually reporting when we're talking about a medication. Um, right. so, so that's nice to know. Are there any contraindications to using Norivio? Is there anyone who should not? Uh, sure. There are some contraindications. Most of them don't apply to uh, adolescents who are, who are healthy otherwise, uh, but the official contraindications in the label package are uh, congestive heart failure or any kind of cardiovascular issue, uh, uncontrolled epilepsy. You know, sometimes we do have teenagers with uh, comorbid epilepsy, so that if it's uncontrolled, they shouldn't use Norivio. And then anyone who has an implanted device, and really this would be anything... Uh, you know, pacemakers, not many kids have pacemakers, uh, but uh, cochlear implants, uh, some of the hearing impaired uh, kids might have cochlear implants. And anytime you have an in implanted device near or 
anywhere associated with, um, you know, where the electrical stimulation could cause that to heat up or change its frequency or its, um, its functioning, that would be a, a problem. So, uh, but those are the, really the only contraindications for the use of Nerivia. Okay. And then it's, of course, really important for everyone to know, do we know yet if insurances will be covering this for teens or people under the age of 18? Well, I think they will, whether, you know, someone could go out today and, and have a hassle-free experience in getting it filled. Uh, I'm, usually insurance uh, payers lag behind a little bit. Uh, in the industry, we usually say give them six months and they'll be on board but there might be some isolated pockets where they, where they pick it up sooner. Uh, I do know that uh, Nerivio does have a program called Nerivio Express. Mm -hmm. This is a commercial program that they have, and they use uh, what we call a specialty pharmacy that uh, you know, uh, doctors can fax or email or, or prescribe on their electronic medical record, and it goes straight to this uh, specialty pharmacy. I think it's called ProCare Pharmacy. Uh, but they are uh, well aware of the issues around uh, insurance billing and mm -hmm. uh, payments and that sort of thing. And they will actually do the prior authorization for the physician's office. So that helps. It kind of, it's designed to kind of smooth out some of the impediments. To the, and, and I presume that this will be available for adolescents as well. Um, and uh, it's what it does is it gives them guarantees that the first fill would be 10 bucks you know, whether the prior authorization goes through or not. So it gives a patient a chance to try it and make sure they're going to like it and want to use it. And then it also buys them a little time to go through, jump through some of the hoops for prior authorization uh, to get that next fill covered. Uh, but either way, if it's not, the company uh, guarantees that it'll be no more than $99 for subsequent refills if people find it very, very helpful, even if their insurance... Uh, uh, doesn't uh, doesn't like it or doesn't want to pay for it. They get ten dollars the first month, and then ninety nine max of ninety nine per month thereafter. Right. So, so the, that's an important. Help. Yes, it's an important thing to know. Most of these new therapies that we discuss together here, when Dr. Smith is on, uh, if they aren't covered yet by your insurance, the the companies often have ways that you can try it. Uh, for the first time or for the first few months or there's a time period to see if it works for you. And that's an important thing to always look up uh, online. So Dr. Smith, is there anything else uh, you would like to share about uh, Nerivio and the new data that has allowed it to be available for people over the age of 12? Well, it's an underserved population because of, you know, as you pointed out in your intro, the, you know, we uh, there's a lot of new treatments out there, but uh, we don't have much data about uh, anything for kids. Right. And so um, there will be some, you know, information and I presume some approvals for, especially for adolescents. Uh, then the next hurdle would be, what about those kids younger than 12? And I think some of these uh, medical devices um, might be a plus plus since you want, you know, you're not putting drug into the system. So mm -hmm. that makes uh, moms and dads feel a lot better about, you know, uh, getting treatment for their child that might be having some pretty incapacitating migraine. It's, it's really a sad, you know, to have a little one that's uh, incapacitated. It's yeah. uh, really, it's bad enough for us old folks to ha have this problem. But uh, when the little ones do, it's, it's really, really, uh, distressing and, and you feel so helpless when there's so many, you know, and you talk to pediatric neurologists and they want to help, but there's just not a lot of data right. for some of the treatments. So this is a plus. Hopefully it's, you know, one of soon to be many uh, follow on reports that we'll be able to come back for some other treatments. Uh, and uh, hopefully we'll have a lot more positive information about this going forward. That's right. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Smith, and thank you everyone for joining us this week on Heads Up. Please join us again for the weekly webcast and podcast of the National Headache Foundation. Goodbye, everyone.